Uh, hello. Uh, another video. Um, yeah, so I'm still alive. So if you remember the last video, I was having a lot of pain in my chest and stuff. Um, and I was sort of like struggling because I wasn't sure whether it would be just like a fibro flare up or something more serious to do with the Marfan and uh, to do with my heart. I mostly thought it was the fibro flare up causing it, which I was right, the fibro flare up was causing it. And um, pain since then has sort of travelled around my body a bit. At the moment it's in my hips and in my feet. Uh, last night, a really bad night with pain. Um, I was in agony with my hip um, and like the pain was shooting all down my leg and everything. But yeah, so just to let you know from that last video, I am still alive. Um, my aorta didn't explode or anything, so it's all good. Um, but today, uh, I think I said in previous videos about my pip appeal. Well, that was today. I was hoping to get a decision today, over a yes or a no, so then I could move on and, you know, do what was needed after. I mean, because if it was a no, then I could work on trying to, um, claim again or reappeal or whatever I had to do next uh, and if it was a yes obviously then that would all be sorted but unfortunately still undecided because today we got to the court um we went in um there were I guess three judges I guess you can call them two of them were from the medical field they were like doctors and one of them i believe was a solicitor who pra who specializes in medical law or something um so uh like i guess called a med medical attorney or something i don't know but we went in the room with them and Basically, they were all really nice. The medical attorney was leading it. He was the main judge. And he sort of explained everything to me when I got in there and sort of explained what they were going to be doing and everything, you know. So it was... that was He was really nice. That was really good. But then they proceeded to ask me questions um about what was written on my form and what was in the um report from the assessment um and they you know they were reading from that and they were asking me questions about that so they could get in more in more in depth look at it i suppose um and well they were asking loads of questions in a way it did feel like a um like I was being oh what's the word my brain's just completely fried at the moment what's the word interrogation that was it um yeah so it kind of felt like it was an interrogation because I was being asked questions um, and then I would, uh, they would ask the same question, but in a different way to try and sort of catch me out, I guess. I don't know, but I was, they were asking so many questions and throwing times and dates at me. And it was just like, oh my God. And me, I'm no good with times and dates. You know, I don't remember that. That doesn't stick with me. I remember I did these things, but I don't remember when. I'm not going to be able to give you a specific time or date, you know. Um, so I kind of explained that to them. 
and still they were trying to get dates out of me and saying well give us a rough time what month for it I'm like I don't know <laughs> you know um so you know I got very confused I was very very confused um and very anxious and I, I was struggling to answer a lot of the questions um, but then they sort of said after they finished questioning me they sort of said right we need to take a break here because there's a lot in this case it's a tricky case there's a lot you have a lot of symptoms a, you know a lot wrong with you and we need to talk about this between us some more and decide what we're going to do next and i was like fine okay so they asked us to wait outside the courtroom for a few minutes so we're sat outside the courtroom i think it must have been about five ten minutes um and then they called us back in we went in and they kind of explained okay because this is such a complicated case and also because we haven't been provided with the correct paperwork that we needed from the dwp um we are going to adjourn this so you will have to come back in a, another month or two to do a second hearing and then you will get your decision so then they explained to me what paperwork was needed and they said they needed previous paperwork from my DLA so they want to know what was written on my DLA forms and why I was awarded DLA and how long I've been on DLA and I said to them that I'd be on, been on DLA since I was a young child um, and they want to know more about my ESA and why I was awarded that and what's written on them ESA forms. Um, and also they want to get hold of my GP uh, medical records, which I did write on the form and DWP were supposed to get hold of that information from my GP. And I think that's part of the paperwork that is missing that DWP has messed up somewhere and they haven't got my medical records so I think what's happened is DWP hasn't been bothered to look over the, the form properly and they've just gone yeah it's let let the assessor deal with it and the assessor are obviously asked some really confusing questions and some of that, what he had written in his report, was a bit twisted um, because the way he'd asked me the questions and then what he put down because he'd asked me questions like, oh, I know you don't go out to the shops because of your mobility. You don't go out shopping that often. But if you were to go out shopping on your own, how how long would it take you if you were to say to go to the, your local shop how long would it take you would you say to walk to that shop and how far away is that shop so i said to him while the shop is about five minutes away it would take me 15 minutes to walk there if i were to go to the shop you know and then he put on he he put in the report that i regularly go to the shop on my own which i didn't I don't and you know so there was a lot of miscommunication there which they spoke about today at the hearing whilst they were questioning me because they were asking about some of that and they were saying it doesn't fit with what was written in my form so I said yes um that was a miscommunication he it was the way he posed the question to me and I explained more and they said all oh, right we see it's just a miscommunication now then so I think they definitely understood what a serious condition it is and they kind of said 
before we left we don't want to just make a decision based on the information we've got now because it's not enough information and we don't want to end up making the wrong decision so we need to adjourn so we can get all this extra information so again it's going to be dragged out for another month maybe two months who knows they might decide to drag it out for another six months you know it's already been about six months since i first claimed so just feel, feels like a never-ending horror roundabout you know um and i'm stuck on it <laughs> um but yeah so really anxious today felt really sick this morning couldn't eat anything um a lot of pain and that but i was just like gotta go gotta do it you know so <sighs> so yeah that's what i've been doing <sighs> but yeah so hopefully fingers crossed it would all pan out i mean my sister said to me, because she went through PIP and the PIP appeal, she said to me, no, they deliberately try and confuse you and ask you these awkward questions. It's like a test. They want you to get confused. If you get confused at what they're asking you and you struggle in the, the appeal, that counts for you that is a good thing that's what they're doing they're trying to see what how confused you get you know so i was like okay well maybe that was a good thing but still i can't can't help feel that somehow i completely messed up because i was like ah uh, i don't know <laughs> you know but uh, my sister also said to me it's probably a good thing as well that the oh that's probably my sister now but yeah she was saying it's probably a good thing as well that they um that they get they want to adjourn and get more information because the more information they have on you and your condition and your medical history and all that the better it is for you so i'm trying to stay positive about it all but i can't help feeling that that sense of doom and dread you know but yeah <sighs> persistent um but yeah i better end this video now and find out who wants to desperately talk to me um that is my house phone ringing <laughs> um but yeah so thanks for watching um hopefully hopefully i will try and do some sort of video for my fan awareness month which is next month february okay okay keep your wig on um but yeah my fan awareness month next month hopefully i'm going to try and do some kind of video or something i want to do something for it but i just haven't had the time energy or mental capacity to think about it lately so i'm gonna see what i can come up with in the next week or two um but yeah keep your eyes on this channel and on my awareness channel um and keep your eyes on my facebook groups and pages awareness page and on my vlogs page i will be posting links to everything on there and whatnot so go take a look um hopefully we might do some live videos on my facebook page do some live chats or something i've not got many people on there at the moment obviously because i only started it on on new year so it's been like less than a month so there's not many people on it at the moment but you just got to give time for 
where to spread with these things so but yeah so do go and check out Suki's vlogs on Facebook um and everything uh I am now gonna try and find out who is ringing me and then maybe watch some more Netflix so I'm absolutely knackered yes and I'm gonna get cuddles from little Juju as well say hello Juju I love you too you're so lovely but yeah bye from me Juju you can say bye bye Juju baby Juju say bye bye Oh, good news.